Let us pray. Eternal and all-wise God, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have made. A day that we've never seen before and a day that we never see again. As we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and we enter into your courts with praise, we've come to invoke your presence to be with us. We've come, dear God, for the sole purpose to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, God, for allowing us to awaken this morning with Jesus Christ on our mind, the Yeshua. We've come, dear God, to glorify you. And so we pray for your Holy Spirit to be with us as we worship you in spirit and in truth. Jesus Christ, holy and righteous name we pray.
listed on our wonderful monitors, taken from Isaiah chapter 12, verses 1 through 6, the third Sunday, third Sunday morning, which is actually on 31. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 11. Amen. Let us begin reading responsibly. Oh, do you not know that as many of us are baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that as Jesus Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the midst of our life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, and that we should no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we die with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, died no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Together, likewise you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And as we remain standing, let us affirm our faith both reverently and sincerely by reciting together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> you may be seated, beloved in Christ. We'll now have our Old Testament and New Testament reading by Reverend Dr. John Walker. Good morning. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading is coming out of the book of Ezekiel, chapter 17. We will begin reading at verse 1. Here is God's word. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, put forth a riddle, and speak a parable unto the house of Israel, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, a great eagle with great wings, long winged, full of feathers, which had divers colors, came unto Lebanon and took the highest branch of the cedar. He cropped it, he cropped off the top of his young twig and carried it into the land of traffic. He set it in a city of merchants. He took also of the seed of the land and planted it in a fruitful field. He placed it by great waters and set it as a willow tree. And it grew, <coughs> and it grew and became a spreading vine of low stature, whose branches turned toward him, and the roots thereof were under him. So it became a vine and brought forth branches and shot forth sprigs. There was also another great eagle with great wings and many feathers. And behold, this vine did bend her roots towards him, and shot forth her branches toward him, and he might, that he might water it by the furrows of her plantation. 
It was planted in a good soil by great waters, that it might bring forth branches, and that it might bring fruit, that it might be a goodly vine. Say thou, thus saith the Lord God, shall it prosper? Shall it not pull up the roots thereof and cut off the fruit thereof, that it wither? It shall wither in all the leaves of her spring, even without great power, or many people to pluck it up by the roots thereof. And verse Verse 17, I mean verse 10, finishing this up. Ye behold, being planted, shall, shall it prosper, shall it not utterly wither. When the east wind touches it, it shall wither in the furrows where it grew. Reading 